My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I am an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at the dimensions command in Revit. If here I am in the annotate tab of the ribbon, there's a dimension panel, and there are a whole bunch of dimensions that are available for me to work with. If I start with the align command, it will automatically give me a contextual tab called modify place dimensions where I can use other commands as well. The option toolbar lets me know that it's looking at the center line of the wall, but it can be changed. And I'm picking individual references or the entire wall. Let's start with individual reference. I can click wherever I want, click wherever I want, as long as it's selecting objects of the model or annotation objects, click to place it, and now I have a dimension. If I need to create a string of dimensions, I can click, say, for example, the walls, and click out, and place that dimension. If I need to, I can actually change this to entire walls and just pick the wall and drag up to place it. I can go within the options of the software and say to also dimension the intersecting walls, which it will do. I can also tell the software to do intersecting grids or and or and openings as well, either the center or the widths, like so. If I want to do a linear dimension, I pick two points in the 3D model, for example, here and here, and it will force me to place a horizontal dimension or a vertical dimension. If I need to place a what most people in the AutoCAD realm refer to as an align dimension, I would use the align command, do individual reference, and pick this edge, and try to pick this edge. If I can't pick this edge, it's because it's joined to this wall. Sometimes you'll run into this in Revit, so the other option is to select the wall and click this little icon to make the temporary dimension permanent, and then we can move this dimension out, and now you have a quote-unquote aligned AutoCAD dimension in Revit. If you need to, you can also click Angular command to create an angular dimension. You can do radial, where you're selecting the object and placing the radius dimension. You can do diameter as well. And once the dimensions are cr created, you can obviously select them and move them out of the way. You have arc length. If I click arc length command, I'm selecting the arc and the two ends of the arcs and then placing the dimension. I can use spot elevation, spot coordinate, and spot slope. This is where it's looking at the physical geometry of an object that has a slope. So I pick spot elevations, for example, and it will see that this ramp has uh, information, and wherever I click is that spot elevation. Same thing with spot coordinate, and same thing with spot slope. When you're finished with the command, you hit modify, and you're out of all the commands. So very quickly, that's a run through on all the dimensioning tools within Revit. Thank you for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.